Water, the essence of life. Florida is a watery paradise, but with over six million residents, 30 million tourists, and another 800 people a day moving to Florida, the demand for water keeps rising, draining Florida's water supply. The Kissimmee River still weeps from the wounds from the past. A look back at our own history teaches a heartbreaking lesson when we see what happened to Florida's liquid heart. This is her story. The legends live on From the Seminole on down Of the river they call the Kissimmee The river they say Did meander her way To big waters they named when summer rains arrived, the river would rise. The land was flooded by water. All nature rejoiced with a singular voice. The birds, the fishes, the otters. A plan was applied. Cycle was changed, no longer remain. The goddess of nature seemed anger. The legend lives on from the Seminole on down. Once as distinctive as the Everglades, the historic Kissimmee River was a vast river floodplain unique in North America, and comparable only to tropical rivers like the Amazon in South America and the Niger in Africa. But man's need for water and dry land changed this distinctive ecosystem forever. Everyone everywhere can share in the rich results of man's mastery of the elements. Then it shall be that water, once the fierce, uncompromising enemy of this long, wide, low-lying land, will become its greatest ally. The rains may come, but there will be no fear in them. They are the waters of Florida's unfolding destiny, the bright promise of Florida's glowing future. In the 1960s, it cost $30 million to channelize the Kissimmee River. What seemed like the best solution years ago is now considered an ecological disaster. And the price tag to repair the damage is staggering. Now, after the completion of phase one, the total project is estimated to exceed $500 million. My grandfather and grandmother were very much against the channelization of the river uh, because it was an interruption of a lifestyle, their culture. These outer ponds were where my family did most of the fishing. These big wet areas, uh, I can show you one here, it was a family fishing pond that never went dry. And My grandmother was a great fisherman and she'd take her cane pole and her Johnson spoon and bacon rind and her waders and hit that pond. and come out with a big string of bass. And I mean, you were catching fish sometimes four and five pounds. And, but that's, that's all gone now. You know, that's all those places are dry, dried up. In the 1970s, numerous scientific studies evaluated the feasibility of the restoration. Would it be possible to restore the lost river ecosystem? the headwaters of Florida's Everglades system? 
The results verified that the only way to restore the historic Kissimmee River and floodplain was to eliminate the flood control canal. Nothing like this has ever been attempted anywhere within this country or even within the world. I mean, the, the project has a, a lot of attention as the model river restoration project. And, and I think that's because it is, it is restoration in its purest sense. And, and by the, that, I mean there, the bar has been set very high for Kissimmee River restoration. It's, this is not restoration uh, for just some individual components of the system, like restoring wetlands or just restoring uh, uh, water quality or just restoring habitat for endangered species, but restoration of ent an entire ecosystem. One of the main components of the restoration project is land acquisition. The South Florida Water Management District acquired the drain floodplain in preparation for eventual reflooding. Over 30,000 acres have been purchased surrounding the chain of lakes, and 60,000 acres in the lower basin were purchased using Save Our Rivers Fund. A third of the 56 mile long C38 is being restored in three construction phases. The standards of Kissimmee River restoration are so high, and, and certainly the the value and, and the rewards of the restoration project are, are unprecedented. Over 300 fish and wildlife are expected to benefit. Nowhere in the world uh, is there a restoration project with a scope of that magnitude. In addition to its value in ter terms of the fish and wildlife components of the system, it's, you know, we're, we're really restoring a part of a significant and unique part of Florida's natural heritage that will be um, available for future generations. 22 miles of the canal must be backfilled to restore over 40 square miles of river floodplain ecosystem, including 43 continuous miles of meandering river canal and 27,000 acres of wetlands. The South Florida Water Management District and the Corps of Engineers are working together to carefully plan, monitor, and scientifically evaluate the project. In June 1999, the South Florida Water Management District, the Corps of Engineers, and members of the Governor's Office celebrated the beginning of Phase 1. The massive reconstructive project was designed to meet a series of objectives. Important criteria for the project were developed and strictly followed during the first phase of the restoration. Re-establishment of the physical form of the river with its historical water levels and flows was accomplished by filling in seven miles of the C-38 drainage canal. Contractors moved over 40,000 cubic yards of spoil a day at the height of productivity. By backfilling the canal, historic river runs that were severed from the flow by the channelization are now rejoined, re-establishing a continuous downstream flow throughout the restored river. Due to the extreme drought conditions during phase one, contractors were able to complete construction in February 2001. Of the six dams along the channelized Kissimmee River, Two dams will be removed to provide continuous flow through the 22 miles of restored river. Blow up the dams, bring her on home, let her flow. Ooh, like a snake in oxbow. Bring back that river and let her flow to the sea. By re-establishing the physical form and historic hydrology of the Kissimmee River, the native flora and fauna quickly returned naturally to the restored ecosystem. Broadleaf marsh and wetland shrub communities abound in the newly backfilled areas. The re-establishment of these wetland plant communities will improve water quality providing the habitat for the subsequent recovery of the food base. What we're beginning to see now is 
these amphibians and reptiles coming back into these natural marshes that we have restored uh, after this first phase of construction. Typically, some of the most common amphibians that we see are the uh, tree frogs, such as the, the green tree frog, uh, some of the larger frogs like the pig frog and the southern leopard frog. Uh, we also expect to see approximately five or six species of turtles to reappear on the floodplain that we never saw prior to this phase of construction. They're part of nature. They, they perform a role in nature. Reptiles, amphibians, wading birds, waterfowl, and fish are naturally returning to the ecosystem. Prior to construction, the con first con phase of construction, we went out and we gathered two to three years of baseline data on the fish community uh, and then we'll again repeat that following construction or restoration to see exactly how restoration has affected different aspects or components of the fish community structure. Research scientists from the South Florida Water Management District's Kissimmee Department have expectations for the restored Kissimmee and are monitoring plant communities, water quality, geomorphology, hydrology, and aquatic invertebrates. Invertebrates are the base of the food web. Without the invertebrates, the fish would have nothing to eat. Without the fish, the birds would have nothing to eat. So they're where it all starts. And the productivity of the aquatic food base is what makes the other trophic levels also be productive. This rigorous and ongoing evaluation will ensure that the restoration project meets its goals. I've always loved bugs, terrestrial aquatic, and that's why I love what I'm doing. It's, it's exciting. There are not a lot of people who do it, and I just think bugs are, are beautiful, if you want to put it that way. They're, they're so diverse. They, they just can look real strange. The stranger the better sometimes, and it's just something that I've always uh, uh, dreamed of doing. Um, never thought I would become involved in this, but to become involved with a, a project on this scale worldwide and, and to be the one individual who's assessing this kind of response, it's absolutely fantastic. It's just a, it's an amazing project. Uh, all of us that work here feel fortunate to have the positions we do. It's, as an ecologist, there's no greater project in the world. The South Florida Water Management District and partner agencies in the region are working together to develop a comprehensive recreation and management plan for the whole restored Kissimmee River Valley that allows for compatible recreational uses. Just as in the past, the valley is once again a popular area for all forms of recreation. Today, the river is also teaching future generations to appreciate nature through environmental education programs. Florida Atlantic University's Center for Environmental Studies offers education programs at the Riverwoods Field Lab in partnership with the South Florida Water Management District. As we look to the future restoration of the historic Kissimmee River, the lessons learned from past mistakes will serve as a living reminder of the need to live in harmony with our environment. Someday we'll find if we call it in time to revive the Kissimmee's life systems. The earth that will tell if we'll only be still. Pay attention to nature and listen. We must live by her rules and be wise with our tools. And the world we will leave to our children. Such a beautiful world we will leave to our children.
the veins of love and the water source, the place I like the best. Flowing into the liquid heart of the Okeechobee is a bastion of education and ecology. Riverwoods country.